What is up, Rat Potential YouTube? Welcome to episode two, working on the Blue Arc 7. Still have to figure out a name. Thinking, thinking because it's got mice in it, we might call it Little Stew, like Stuart Little, but backwards. So, comment below what you think. Little Stew, the Blue Arc 7. Anyways, we've got the fuel tank out. And, guys, let me tell you, I said in the first video, this thing is mint. Now, I'm not saying the inside of this fuel tank is going to be perfect, because the way the fuel smells, it's probably not. But, every bolt came out of all the the, the shields didn't, br I mean, that was broken, but no big deal. Like, look at how not rusty it is, guys. Had a little bit of crust on this one. It was, you know, it probably would have cooperated if I'd have ripped it out, but it didn't need to. That goes into this spot, which just slides into your quarter. Look how clean it is under here, dudes. We got another mouse nest. Oh, sorry. We got another mouse nest in the frame rail I got to get out, which that's where the bumper mount actually goes. All the fuel lines came off. The rollover valve's in really good shape. Spare tire well. So, I saw a comment on one of the past videos asking about gas tanks and which gas tanks can be used with which car, etc., etc. So here's your quick rundown, all right? On an SA, and I'll tell you the two that I can confirm, and I've said this before in videos, I've never owned an 81 to 83 RX-7, so I don't entirely know the changeover spot in those years, but I do know two things to tell you to look out for, and you can measure them on your car to make sure. On an SA, okay, they came with a full-size spare. That means that this spare tire well okay, is about an inch and a half to two inches deeper than that of what I can confirm a GSLSE, okay? So on a GSLSE RX-7, the 13B equipped RX-7, they came, that car down there, the rally car, they came with a donut spare, okay? So the spare tire well is that inch and a half shallower, right? So the GSLSE tank is bigger than a 1978 tank. That's all the information I can like super confirm. Like I said, never had an 81 to 83. Got myself in a little trouble before speculating those, so I'm just gonna leave it out. But I know a GSLSE gas tank, which has a half inch feed line, a very nice like drop in um, plate up here for all your lines to come out, is in fact taller than a first gen tank. So that white car over there, which is a 79, has a shortened the spare tire well is cut out and raised up so that you could put a GSLSE tank, which is what's in that car, for the half inch feed, turbo, all that stuff, instead of the three, three eighths feed. So, anyways, this thing is mint. I am going to, it doesn't really sound, oh, there's liquids in there. There's liquids in there. Um, so we're going to pop this thing off real quick. This is your fuel level sender. So this is the piece, disconnect that wire. And uh, this is the piece that tells you how much fuel you have. There's definitely liquids in here, and it definitely smells very ripe. So I'm going to go ahead and get out my impact screwdriver and probably a vice grip, and we're going to take these out to see down inside this tank and see how this thing looks, guys. It's really not rusty. These up here will rust where this foam pad is. Look how clean that is, dudes. But they'll rust underneath the foam pad, which I doubt this has any rust under there. And I bet if I pressure wash this, when I do, it's going to look mint. And we'll pressure wash that too. So we're going to inspect this. We'll pull the fuel pump stuff off here in this next clip. And uh, let's get to looking inside. Missing the starter. The moment of truth, guys. How bad is the inside of the fuel tank? Oh, oh, this is not good, guys. Not good. Not good. Look at all that. That is custom right there. Woo! Woo-wee. 
can't get this rubber seal off of here. Look at that. Good stuff. Good stuff right there. You know how not rusty this is? We're using a Phillips screwdriver on these hose clamps. Normally you're like, you have to use the socket. I mean, the outside of the tank, right? The inside of the tank's toasted. I want to shine this flashlight in here after I get this these two hoses off. Ooh, that part looks mint. This hose is chucked. Okay, guys. The moment of truth. What does the inside of your gas tank look like after it's been sitting for a long time? I can't really do much more for you than that, but needless to say, the inside of this gas tank is ruined. I got large chunks down in there. I got a nice paste-like mixture of rust laying in the bottom. And that is not fun, or fine, or good. So, I'm going to grab a pan and pour some of this into it. And you guys can see what that looks like. Okay. Oh, yeah. That is ripe, fellas. That is ripe. Woo! Alright, this is definitely... <sighs> Not California legal. Holy custom fuel right there. That is not fuel colored. And like I said in the earlier video, but guys, we need a smell function on YouTube. Actually, probably not because that could get really bad. But those who've worked on a car and dealt with old gas definitely know what this smells like. So what to do moving forward. All right, since we're talking fuel system, we'll go ahead and talk through the rest of it while we're in the shop with some light featuring my rally car. Go check out that whole build. This is your OEM fuel pump. Looks like OEM. And this is where the filter would go, which looks like it's been replaced. This plate mounts on the bottom of your car. You saw me take it off earlier in the video, and that's what pumps fuel. This goes up through the floor, which you can see in the rally car, the wire down there, which you saw me unplug it, and runs up to the front. Now, if you have a stock Nikki, what you can do, and I've had good luck with these in the past, on Amazon, you can buy a cheap, like $15 to $20 carburetor fuel pump. It's this. Okay, they're super cheap. I think I have like three or four of them here. And that car or that fuel pump will almost directly bolt in. You can see how it's oriented here with these two bolt holes or the little tabs. And then when you come over here, you can see where these are at. You can normally get one of them on and then it's not really going anywhere, but you can bolt it down pretty solid. So that's what I'm going to use to replace the factory fuel pump with. The fuel filter, just a generic carburetor rated fuel filter um, is what you want okay so that's the fuel system now I do have to flush the lines which I'll just do by myself the next video we are going to because I want to keep these rolling out quick okay this is a Nikki carburetor the one that we had rebuilt for this car fresh and ready to rip and it's been emission stripped okay now Charles has agreed to make a video with me going over the Nikki stuff. So I don't know when that's going to be coming out. Maybe next weekend we'll film it. He has a carburetor he has to rebuild. So I want to get over there to look at that one. And then we'll kind of go through it. Make a longer video, but get him talking and, and go through it. I am going to devise a plan on what to do with the fuel tank. Now, most likely, just because I can see how this is going to shake out in my head and with how some of my projects are going to be for the winter, and this, that, and the other, what I might do is, 
All right, guys, this is future Eric interrupting past Eric because I wasn't super stoked with how I filmed the outro just a few seconds ago. So, yes, we're probably going to end up getting rid of this tank. Okay, it's a little crusty. It's not very good on the inside. And I don't want to invest the time in cutting it apart, cleaning it, welding it, like cleaning it, recoding it, welding it back together and doing that. We can take it to a shop and have that done, but it's expensive. So this tank's probably just going to get put on my shelf for if I actually need one that doesn't have holes in it, we can have this one restored. Okay. I'm most likely going to take the SA tank that was in the mouse, okay, my original 1980, my first one, which is in this 99 car, which is a GSLSE. That's how I know the separation thing was, I think I already mentioned. But I'm going to take that tank out because it's not rusty, and I'm going to put it in the blue car. I'm going to flush the blue car lines out tonight, okay, the fuel lines, get them clean, pump some fuel through them, um, just one of my trash pumps, and get them flushed out. And then with that... We can put some extra extra fuel filters up there to make sure we don't clog up the Nikki carburetor. Okay, so that's my plan. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to get back to work under the car cleaning everything because, well, I don't like working on dirty cars. And the rally car is a perfect example of having to put cars together that just need to be clean because I don't like wearing safety glasses under cars and, you know, white. you got to make it nice. But that means I'm leaving you guys. You guys are going to have to see this thing run in the next video. I know in the last video I said I was going to try to make it run in this one, but with how things shook out this weekend, traveling and stuff, we didn't get to put this on, and this was Sunday. So this week my goal, get the carburetor on the car, get that other fuel tank in the car, get that car fired up, and hopefully, hopefully we don't run into any major issues. Actually, I think I'm going to leave the stock exhaust on it, and uh, hopefully that like it just works and it's not too rusty. With that, thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Keep it rad. What are you doing? It's cold, huh? It's about time to uncover that the stove and get the get the shop warmed up, even though we're working on this car out in the yard. It's about how all the conversations go with the dog around here. Peace guys.